Hello Vikings and welcome back to another Asankut Valhalla video. So in this Forgotten Saga episode, I'm going to give you everything I know, everything I have learned from this new Forgotten Saga roguelite game mode. Be sure to watch everything or not, totally up to you and in advance. Sorry, this is pretty long. And yes, this will have all of the boss battles. And yes, this is one single run. One of the most important things in this game mode, it has to be the skill tree. So yeah, everybody is starting fresh. Everybody is playing on default, basically level one and starting with nothing. So totally up to you what you want to use. But my recommendation is go up and after that, go to the sides or down. Because going up, there is the most useful stuff like slowing down time when you are doing a perfect dodge and yes that is pretty much a lifesaver also you can get melee damage you can get assassination damage increase the drop rate of legendary items you name it everything is there so choose the best skills for your needs but let's go let's talk to nar and let's talk a little bit about his favors that are pretty much one-time things so elk tracker in your next run you will see all the elk shrines on the map silent assist yeah there will be no alarms in Duggerland, and the horns will stay silent for this time vivid memory you can get one ability from your previous run to use but it is reset to level one and about the abilities i really like the lightning fury i think it is the best overall from all of the abilities in our use it is a melee ability and I highly recommend of getting only one melee and only one range abilities because you won't be needing more than one. Keepsake, you can recover one of the weapons from your previous runs. Elk Herd, the number of elk shrines are increased, going well with the map and of course if you are pretty early on, inflated currency, it is a must. Couple more tips before you go into your run, after the gear, I really think fully upgraded Dwarven Defender, it is the most overpowered gear for any run. Why? Because the Crit and Idun's Heart, they are giving you health back and the health it is what you need. Although all for the armor set, it is pretty okay as well. Raven's Light, like said in my armor video, for hunters in heavy set, it is for the warriors out there, dual wielding heavy weapons, so double spear for the win. Dead Speaker Strapping, Chain Assassination and Advanced Assassination, pretty useful, especially pretty early on. I mean, if you are farming coins and just want to clear the camps, yeah, Dead Speaker might be your choice. Troke Stall, you need this armor for trophy, so you need to beat the hill with this armor. Your coin and memory earnings are increased by 25%, but your healing is reduced by 50%, so that sucks if you die a lot. Kind of. But still, this is pretty okay set. The health set, definitely useful, especially if you like to use fire, and yeah. One of the biggest things that are gonna make or break your game, it is the elemental powers, ice, fire, poison, or shock either of those or all of those together yeah you will be unstoppable at the end so as promised buy all of the north favors that you need you want before you upgrade your gear also do the same before you use any skill points so you don't have to start with nothing i mean if you have found the best weapon for you best ability for you definitely it is worth of getting those and the increased coins and memories, I can guarantee that. And at the start, don't worry about the pure of heart trophy, where you need to kill Nidhogg, without using the elk shrines, do that much later. But if you are gonna try, the shrines are definitely no, but the elk antlers from the shopkeepers, well, you can use those, I have tested it. But now for the run and for the boss battles, little spoiler ahead, the bosses 3 and 4, so second last and last boss, they weren't my best runs, I mean the third boss, it was really disappointing, almost embarrassing, but you will see what I mean really soon. Also in this video we will be using the permanent favors, so the rope lines, the summoned courage, all of that will become clear little bit later on in this video. 
Also, at this point, a like or subscribe would really help me and the channel and the video out. So, thank you if you did do that. Thank you. For now, the main point, the actual run, and how you can make the Forgotten Saga roguelite game mode your... Pretty much everything depends on your playstyle and what you want to use. So definitely, if you like hammers, take hammers. If you like spears, take spears. But consider the outfit choice for your playstyle and for your weapons and abilities that you are gonna use. That will make everything much easier. Same goes with the runes. And note, I know the legendary runes, with legendary weapons, they are so attempting, but even the quote unquote worst runes or worst quality runes and weapons, they can be still much better for your needs than the legendary items. If there is nothing that you need and no wanting and needing, they are two different things. So think carefully, do you need it or do you want it? If you want it, skip it. Please take the coins because you will need coins on the shopkeepers and you will find the shopkeepers before every boss and even you might encounter roaming shopkeepers. They are selling everything, so abilities, runes, weapons, upgrades, also elk antlers, aka the healing items or potions, however you like to call them. But like I said, definitely upgrade your favorite abilities, upgrade your first melee weapon if you are using two. So the main weapon you are using, that is absolutely number one. The ability you are using the most, it is number one. And also if there is a choice to get ability, upgrade for ability or adrenaline, even if you have the ability that you want, need and use, Take the Adrenaline instead, because that is how you are using your abilities in this game mode and in the main game. But still, having 4 to 5 slots, well, that can't hurt, or can it? But for now, let's go into the boss battle. The first boss, I got Lava Wolf in this run. There is also a Ice Wolf and a Boar. When they start glowing like this, run away, run away. Also, these battles remind so much of Ascent Creed Origins God battles. So, run out of the way when they are doing something. Remember to dodge and remember to use your abilities on the bosses. Remember to use the elemental powers. All of the bosses have a special icon next to the health bar implicating what elemental they are weak for. And <laughs> look at that. How funny is the death of the boss? For example, this wolf. He cannot handle the shock damage, aka the lightning, after each boss battle. And also, in the last area, after each battle, head to the place where you are seeing glowing lights. That is the way to go. But we are now in the second area that is called Tuggerland, aka Muspel area. And here, things get interesting. I really hope you are gonna use my method in your runs, because this is super easy. Also, I highly recommend of keeping the first bow if there is no other hundred bows in the elite shopkeeper, roaming shopkeeper or the regular ones inventory. Yeah, this is surprisingly good bow, especially if you are using the skill points on the headshot damage, on the range damage and using the range gear. I mean, even the first bow that you are gonna get, that is deadly and I have always got the hundred bow. I have never seen light bow or predator bow at the start, so I have been always starting with the hunter bow. Pretty much every area can be cleaned out this way, so just sniping. I actually did do the whole run without upgrading my quiver, even though I wanted, but yeah, none of the shopkeepers didn't sell those. Also, I upgraded my bow at the very end, because we don't have that many hunter bows in this game mode, mostly predator bows and light bows. But overall, Hunter Bow, it is much better for close combat and when you are having more distance to your enemies. I mean, Light Bow, it is really good for the boss battles because of the spammability of the arrows. Predator Bow, in the other hand, yeah, that is no close combat weapon, but that actually might help you in this Duggerland area. So, everyone, let me know in the comments down below, are you gonna use this sniping tactic in Duggerland or in all of the areas or not? I am really keen to hear your thoughts and if I'm leaving something out that you would like to share, please do so in the comment section down below.
all right we are out of the arrows but don't worry in every area where you fight enemies there should be some arrows lying around also you might want to collect arrows from the bodies and like i did take the elemental build up elemental damage whatever you are using choose the runes that you are gonna use in your build so for example i'm using mjölnir aka the shock damage so of course i'm going to take any elemental damage because they are put together also there are individual ones like poison fire ice and shock sometimes they are put in one rune so there is everything damage or build up and i highly recommend of taking those first definitely the build up and the damage in the Ukkerland area you are seeing those towers aren't you yes in every tower you will have quiver filled with arrows so if you need to restock visit towers it only takes few seconds to climb up and loot also you might encounter these thieves and they are giving you like 90 coins every time you kill them or steal from them but be careful if you are spotted they will disappear and extra reward poof gone if you want do what i do but apply the changes in your playstyle in your builds and like said i'm happy to answer any comments in the comment section down below Also another mention worthy thing, quote unquote elite shopkeepers, one in every map and you are gonna use the currency that you are using for buying the legendary favors from NAR or upgrading your gear, so spend your currency wisely with these guys, but definitely worth checking, so every area has one, also you might encounter drinkables in this game, they are totally random, so doesn't matter which one you are choosing. It might give you health back, it might give you health upgrade, or it might take 25 health from you. And I was lucky in this run, I got the health upgrade two times from the potions or drinks. But we are getting closer to the second boss. Also, if you have freed the dwarves, you will see a chest just before the last merchant, before the boss of this area. That chest will give you 300 coins to use at the shop. Also, if there is nothing that you want in the shop, but you have plenty of coins, it is highly recommend of getting those runes because you might encounter the rune that is giving you more health for every single rune that you have in your inventory. Talking about the runes, there is a rune called Blood Drunk and the Blood Drunk, it is actually one of the best runes in my opinion because on every heavy finisher you are getting 4 health back. So definitely if you are not using this gear and you are using some other gear, that actually might be a lifesaver. But moving on to the boss, the second boss of this game mode, he is weak to shock damage. Like said in the first one, every boss will have a little icon next to their health bar showing their elemental weakness. And just basic tip for normal enemies or boss fights, remember to dodge, remember to parry, because that will help you a lot.
So that was surprisingly easy. I think this is my fastest run with this boss, but be aware, he will actually throw the lump on his back. And little spoiler alert, skip next few seconds. So the lump, it is on eye, and the eye will shoot lasers aka fire, and also pretty much third spin of his weapon is unblockable, so you need to dodge two first, you may be able to parry. You might be noticing we are in a different area in Nidheim, so the third area out of the four. In this area you will have a lot of druids and they are using fire damage, fire bombs, fire breeding. So be careful with these guys and no, this shopkeeper isn't always here. And here we are gonna get the blood drunk that was mentioned earlier. So pretty pretty useful one. And quick note, the Draugr, the melee Draugr or the archer Draugr that will fight with you. Well yeah, they are unusable in the boss battles, I don't know why. So I'm gonna skip those. Actually I once bought one of those. I was gonna use it in the boss battle, but it didn't work. But yeah, blood drunk, if you are finding it, definitely a good choice. And as you can see here, I'm taking basically the lowest quality rune, just because it will fit my playstyle, my gear, my setup much better than the other two. That was the thing I was meaning earlier. Don't get confused with quote unquote better stuff, because those might not suit your playstyle, your gear, your ability settings at all. We are about to hit the third boss, aka the dragon, aka the Nidhogg. And yeah, there will be surprise, there will be the fail I was talking about in earlier this video as well. Basically I was ready to give up in this battle, but something crazy happened and we are gonna see two of the permanent favors that are usable in every run only once in action. If you want to know where to get those two, I will leave my video about the Freedom Fighter trophy, aka that is how you are gaining some of the favors into the end screen, so wait until the end or check the description box down below. Nidhogg, he is weak for the fire, but any elemental damage will do just fine. Be careful, he will stomp, he will back kick, he will swing his tail and his wings, and those are making damage, interrupting your progress. Also, he's using poison damage on you by shooting it, by dropping it, and creating huge areas of poison and blasting like here. And there, back kick like I said, it interrupts and tail swing. And boom, there was the beam. He was shooting poison fire from his mouth. Best tactic in my opinion, complete your attack set until you are done with one finisher. Then move on to the next leg and rinse and repeat. Of course, the lightning fury ability, it is really, really, really useful in this boss battle. And there will be a surprise, so spoiler alert, after you have defeated him at least once, well, the fight is not over. You can shoot him while he's in the air, dropping the health of the legs. You only need to defeat three legs, then he will crash. And off that crash, 
well, that is when the crazy thing start. So let's see, let's wait. Boom, now I am really screwed. I am stuck between his body, his wing, his tail. No way out. Didn't matter what I was using. If I was using abilities, dodging, gliding, running, nothing worked. As you can see in here, the, I was starting to get desperate at this point. But let's see how everything rolls in our favor. But yeah, this was definitely painful. And now, moment of truth, when our health drops under 100 health, yeah, we are getting the permanent favor of Wolf's Pledge, so the wolf will come and fight for us. As we can see in here, the wolf is attacking the dragon, and other favor in this battle will be activated as well. After completing the Wholesome Warrior from the first area, you actually will gain another favor, that is one of the best favors from all of these. Summon courage, so basically when you are dying, your health drops to zero, you will get some health back. So pretty useful, life saving, don't you think? And boom, thanks to the wolf, we are freed, just enough opening so we can get out. And now what you need to do, you actually need to attack the neck of the dragon. And yeah, there is the wolf, really digging into the dragon. And if you have the blood rank. Now it is time to use the heavy finishers, so I highly recommend of doing two light attacks and finish it with heavy finisher, so you can get some health back. Needhawk, his health bar at this state, it is separated into the two, after you have dropped the one big health bar, the part one of this battle will start all over again, so you need to destroy the legs, once again be careful, his wings, his blasting, his legs, his kicking, and as you can see, we are getting almost zero to health and summoned courage, it is almost activated.
there, zero health, and let's see this one in slow motion. Overall, I'm not happy how I did in this battle, and like I said before, this was pretty much the worst Nidhogg battle I have ever done, but somehow we were managed to beat this one. So let's see, part 1, it is almost over, after that part 2, and I will keep giving some helpful tips that you might wanna use or don't, totally up to you. And this was the other part that was screwed up for me. Usually the minions they are coming from the first part, so definitely if you can try to kill every minion that you can. More you kill, the lower the health will be when you're starting the next part of the battle. And yeah, like I said, that was pretty much a screwed fail for me. All of the legs they are back to 50% or so. So again from leg to leg, let's do this. And finally, the boss has been beaten, and how we know that? Well, we are getting some rewards afterwards, so every time you get that, yeah, the battle is over. So let's move on to the next part towards the glowing gate. See you in the Helheim.
when you arrive in Helheim, there is only one way to go through that bluish portal thingy. If you have find all of the elite merchants and beaten the game at least once, you are getting the favor that you can travel to the elite merchant at any point in Helheim except the start or very end. So everything in between, you will have two portal options. After you have used it once, the other portal, well, you won't be able to interact with it. I highly recommend of doing the sniping style once again in every single area that you can. So let's see how this goes. Like said earlier in this video, there will be quiver of arrows in every place you are fighting. Also in this area you might be able to see the drinking guy that is offering you three drinks so you can gamble. You may get the health back, you may get the health upgrade or losing your health. But for now, let's take a look what this guy is selling. So pretty much nothing that we will use, but I'm gonna buy the rune even though I don't have fire damage at the moment. But just in case we are getting the health on every rune thing. And no, I won't get that one from the last merchant that we are gonna encounter. Now let's move on to the second area. And here we will get the bow that is themed after the steampunk bow. And yeah, that bow, it is pretty awesome. By my loins, I feel refreshed. This must be the seat of so many of these drinks throughout the land. Looking for a bit? The last merchant of this game mode. Yeah, we are skipping every weapon, we are skipping the abilities, but definitely we are gonna buy the runes, powerful elements, useful, the critical damage and the critical chance, pretty pretty useful, and the dagger that I have, poison on parry, useful as well. So let's go, let's get a little bit health, and actually this third area where we are gonna go, yeah, this almost feels like a cheating, when you are aiming and shooting your enemies from the 
safe part yeah they are not able to detect you and you can snipe them all day long just remember these places might change so the thing we had in area 2 of Helheim it might be here it might not be here they are changing so definitely take this with grain of salt doesn't apply in every run but you can still use these tips in every run no matter what So without rinsing and repeating, basically the same battles over and over again. This staircase will indicate that you are at the final boss. So let's see the cutscene, let's do the fight. It wasn't perfect, but it was still pretty good in my opinion. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. Also, were any of the tips in this video helpful to you? And are you gonna use any of those? Let me know in the comment section down below. Stay out of my realm, old man! Not until I see my son! Are you sure he wants to see you? Niflheim shall never bow to your will! <laughs> that has the ring of a challenge. So boom, run completed, Odin's gains, victory, and I think I shared everything I know. But if you feel I left something out, please let me know in the comments down below. I'm more than happy to answer any additional questions that you may have or may not have. 
Also, I would really like to know, have you played this game mode? Have you beaten this game mode? And also, before ending this video, really huge shout out to every single one of you who have been watching, who have been hitting the like, who have subscribed to the channel, and special shout out goes to my channel members, aka the Elite Wolfpack. You guys are awesome, and if you want to become part of the Elites, there is join button below this video. You can get custom emojis, early access to some of my videos, depending on the membership level. But before rolling the outro, remember to stay awesome, stay hydrated, and see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, remember to hit the like, hit the sub, turn on the notifications so you won't ever miss anything that I upload or when I go live. Also Vikings, have fun, stay safe, be strong, hope to see you in the next one, Skatha, over and up, and bye bye.